briefly about this last one. So, um, I will frequently have some variant of this conversation with folks. Uh, I will get a call from someone and they will say, um, I've got an LLC, uh, we own some property, um, we've sold the property, we got some cash sitting here, we got a dispute with somebody about something, the LLC does. Um, we may own $10,000, we may own nothing, we may own $100,000, not really sure. We got $25,000 sitting in the bank account. We're just gonna take the money and just take the money out of the LLC and tell them to go pound sand, all right? Well, <laughs> you know, if, the, if that were a bona fide strategy, wouldn't life be grand uh, from, the, uh, from the perspective of the, on the debtor side of practice, right? Uh, but unfortunately, if you, take, if you take assets out of your LLC or limited partnership while knowing that it does or may owe other people money, um, you're going to have a problem, right? Among, and the, the, the variety of problems, but among other things, uh, the third-party creditors of that LLC from whom you've taken the money have them, even though you've got, even though you say, well, I'm not personally liable for anything because I'm a member of an LLC, right? Well, not so fast, okay? To the extent that you take money out of the LLC, knowing that it has unpaid bills due to third parties, those unpaid third parties can trace the LLC assets into your hands personally and come after you personally. All right. So let's say you get an LLC that owes somebody hundred thousand dollars, and the LLC's got fifty thousand dollars in the bank account, and I'm the member of the LLC and I take out the fifty grand. Well, you know, guess what? They're coming after me personally for fifty grand. All right. Um, you, you don't get to just—it's not quite that easy. All right. This is—I um, actually want to spend a little time on this. This is a useful tool to have in your toolkit and actually understand. All right. Um, so here's my example. Um, Gail and Paul, I'm pick on you again. Sorry. All right. So let's say Gail and Paul come to me and they want to do a deal. And they come and they say, Gail says, "Look, um, I'm the money investor on this, and I got um, I got a half million dollars uh, that I'm going to put into this enterprise. And Paul is going to be the sweat equity guy on this." And our deal is going to be, Paul's going to use my $500,000 to find some good properties to buy and rehab. Um, and we'll either rent them or flip them. Uh, and we're going to make a lot of money doing this. And so and this is going to end. And Gail says, Paul is really important to this. And, you know, um, um, he's really going to have to work hard at this and put a lot of sweat equity into this. So even though I'm putting a half million dollars in, it's going to be a 50 50 deal. 50 50 deal. All right. This happens not infrequently, some version of this. All right. And so I say, okay, all right, I'm with you. Paul's important, 50-50 deal. So the question I, I'm always going to ask at that point, I say, I just want to make sure that we fully thought this through and that we're all on the same page on this. So let's say that I create this LLC, and let's say that Gail uh, writes her $500,000 check to the LLC, and we put that in the bank account, okay, and then we sign the paperwork. Okay, and then let's say that for whatever reason, the next day, you guys change your mind and you don't want to do this anymore. All right? Um, for whatever reason, okay? Paul gets sick. Gail decides she hates Paul. Gail gets a cold feet. Whatever. Okay? So it's the day after. And so now I'm looking at the LLC balance sheet, okay? And I'm, gonna say, I'm looking at that OT account. On the asset side, I see a half million dollars in cash. And I'm, on the other side, I see no liabilities. And I see $500,000 of owner's equity. Okay, so we're now going to pull the plug on this LLC, right? Okay, now Gail, is it your intent that if we do that, the day after we form the LLC, the day after you write your check, that Paul's going to get $250,000? No, 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 the vast majority of the time, that's really not the intent, okay? And if someone tells me it is the intent, 
But I'm going to push a little bit further on that and say, okay, well, that's fine. Okay, I understand. I'm with you. 50-50 deal. So you understand what that means is. What that means is that if we do it that way, there's been an immediate capital shift of $250,000 from Gail and Paul. We signed that piece of paper, we got a capital shift of $250,000. Which means that now Paul has got $250,000 of W-2 income that's going to get reported this year that he's going to pay, have to pay ordinary income tax on without an associated distribution of cash. Now, Paul, are you okay with that? Right. Now, the, the, real, the real answer, it, let me tell you what Paul's answer should be. Paul's answer should be, absolutely I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. If I got, you know, if I got to pay 30 cents, if I got to pay, if I got to pay 30 cents, this is what it's really saying. Will you, will you pay me 30 cents for a dollar? I will pay, if anybody here wants to sell me a dollar for 30 cents, We'll take that action all day long because that's what we're really saying. Okay, but but most of the time that's really what's not involved. So there's a way. So what's the solution to all that? Okay, the solution to all that is there are really sort of two solutions to that, and we use both of them frequently. The first solution is we're, instead of um, doing the deal like I described, we're going to give Paul a profits interest in this. And this enterprise. And the way that's going to work is we're going to have documents that are going to say, okay, Gail's put in a half million dollars. And it's going to say that Gail is going to get 100% of the cash, income, and gain from this LLC until she has gotten her $500,000 back. Okay? We're going to allocate everything to Gail until she gets her money back. And we might give Gail, if I represent Gail, we're also going to give Gail a preferred return on. We're going to give Gail an 8% coupon or 10% coupon or 12% coupon, something like that. So our doc is going to say that until Gail gets her half million bucks plus her preferred return back, Gail gets everything. When Gail has gotten a complete return of her capital and her preferred return, then at that point in time, we're going to flip to the 50-50 deal. Okay? And every dollar after that is going to get split 50-50. Okay? We do it that way. Under my example, Gail has gotten half a million dollars back on day two, right? Gail's going to know she's going to get her money back. It's not going to be in a current taxable event for Paul. Paul won't start paying income under that scenario until Paul starts getting allocated his 50% down the road, right? So everybody's, everybody's problem is solved, right? The other way to address that issue, which we also use, is... Um, a simple solution would be to just have it this way. Gail, rather than put her half million dollars in the LLC as equity, Gail is simply going to make a loan to the LLC of a half million dollars. Okay? So, so to go back to my example, if I'm looking at my T account, all right, Gail has loaned a half million dollars to the LLC rather than putting a half million dollars in as equity, I'm going to see a five hundred thousand dollar. I'm going to see five hundred thousand dollars on the asset side of the T account in the form of cash in the bank from Gail. On the liability and owner's equity side, I'm going to see a five hundred thousand dollar note payable from the LLC back to Gail, and I'm going to see zero owner's equity. All right, and and under those circumstances, what we'll probably say is um, the LLC is going to use all the cash that it generates to pay down Gail's note till it's paid off in full. And then at that point, and then and then it's it's 50 50 from day one, but there's no cash to distribute until Gail gets paid her loan back. Or you can negotiate something that says we're going to take half the cash and apply it to Gail's note, and the other half of the cash is going to be spent 50 50. But that's that structure will also work under those circumstances. Yes. In the former scenario, thank you. In the former scenario, doesn't that have Paul waiting through? Getting zero dollars for his sweat equity until half a million dollars has been made. Yeah, and so let me address that. Sounds like a bad deal. Well, <laughs> I'm giving you the simplified deal up here to illustrate the point. The way it may not be a bad deal, okay? If it's if they're doing a development project that they expect to sell out of in 24 to 36 months, you know, he's going to get his money back in 24 to 36 months. He's probably also if this is a typical sort of high-end commercial real estate deal, Paul will be charging a few fees along the way, right? Uh, we might give, what Paul might come to us and say is, Paul might say, look, you can't get a gale of 100% of everything because I'm still going to be in, I'm, I'm going to end up being allocated some taxable income for tax purposes under this LLC document. 
you need to at least give me a tax distribution that is going to be equal to my tax liability, right, associated with the LLC, while you're paying everything else to get able to pay our money back. So there, there are a lot, or it may be, you know, if Paul, if it's going to be a buy and hold thing for a long time, I mean, it, there are a variety of ways to massage the economics so that Paul is surviving along the way and has a deal that's economic for him. And probably the easiest way to do it, if it's a long-term buy and hold deal, that where, where you're probably not, don't expect to get Gail's money back, let's say, for five or six years, you're probably going to have the fee structure in there that is going to keep Paul interested in the deal until he's in the money on his backside profits interest. You may have a management contract, you may get a development fee, you may get an asset management fee, you know, something like that. A little salary, something to keep him alive. 